Just dial 555-C-R-E-E-P. Creep. Hello, folks. Welcome back to our channel. This is your funny neighborhood, Goosebumps Boy. And today, I'm going to be reviewing Calling All Creeps. Calling All Creeps, indeed. Number 50 from OG62. So basically, before I move on to the book itself, I'm going to say a few things about the front cover, as I usually do. Wow, the front cover is so amazing. One of my favorites from Tim Jacobus. I got to admit, this front cover is so, so scary and so well made. And uh, it is definitely one that back, back, back when I was, um, back when I was starting the, the Goosebumps books, I used to just, you know, watch this, look at this front cover and I wonder about what this book could possibly be about, wondering uh, what the story could be. And I remember feeling so curious and uh, and uh, and wanting to read this book really in order to know exactly what 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 is what it is that uh, that happens in in this book. And uh, it's such a great um, such a great um, picture that I really thought to myself, you know what, let's read it. So I read it about two years ago, which is basically when I started this Goosebumps journey. And uh, I remember it feeling so good. I remember fe fe feeling like this this story was pretty good. But yeah, th that was thanks to the book, uh, to the front cover that, makes, that made me want to read this book. And uh, there's a Goosebumps um, <clears throat> YouTuber I really enjoy. Check him out. His name is Goosebumps Godzilla. Goosebumps Godzilla. And basically, this front cover is his profile picture. It's his profile picture, this front cover. And I can totally understand why anyone would want to get this as their profile picture. And this is such a great work, really, from Tim Jacobus. Such great art. This illustration... It's definitely one of Tim Jacobus's best illustrations, in my opinion. So basically, what do we have? We have a phone booth, and basically we have these lizard creatures slash human beings. Like they're they they're <clears throat> they stand like they're standing like humans. Like they stand like humans. They having they're wearing human clothes. They they're wearing those human clothes, but basically they're. They're purple lizards, lizard creatures, creatures, right? So basically, even like, they even look a little bit like alligators, look like alligators, lizards, and basically, yeah, they're purple, and they have those yellow, green eyes, and basically the, the yellow light, the yellow, this kind of greenish glow is kind of pouring out of the phone booth, and it basically, it sounds like they, they're in the spotlight to, to some extent. It's like the light is shining around them, and I like it. And I really believe that it's a great way to put the focus put the focus on those characters. And basically, it's night out, and uh, you have some <clears throat> glittering stars in the sky. And basically, the sky is getting dark blue, and it's pink, you know, um, near the fence. <clears throat> which would, <clears throat> which would, <clears throat> which would indicate that the sun is probably setting, and uh, that's really beautiful in my opinion. And even the front, uh, the the color behind the Goosebumps title uh, is pink, so it's re it reflects that kind of pink, uh, pinkish color from the sky, and uh, also the purple from the liz the purple color from the lizards. From the lizards, from the lizard faces, from the lizards faces and hands, and I believe it's so cool. And these characters, yeah, they look like teenage. <clears throat> they look like teenagers. Obviously, one of them is wearing a cap in reverse, but yeah, in reverse. So basically, they look like your typical um, teenagers, middle schoolers. But basically, that's pretty much it, and. uh <clears throat> they're wearing some blue shirts and jeans and so on, but and one of them yeah is also wearing a pink uh pink sweater, and it's reflected by the sky as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. 
I don't want to spend too much time on this front cover, <clears throat> but I wanted to let you know about this 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 book cover as I really enjoy it. So let's move on to the book itself now that I basically spend some time talking about the front cover. Let's move on to the story itself, the story itself. So basically, our main character is Rick Beamer, Ricky Beamer. And basically, what happens is something not so cool happens. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, he kind of gets suspended from, um, uh, Suspended from the paper, he was uh, basically running along with another girl. Uh, her name is Tasha, Tasha McLean. And basically, it's one of those those stories that start off with um, an event, with an event. It, start off, it, start, it starts off with an event that actually has to do uh, with something that happened prior to that. So basically, you'd have the first chapter... And Rick is doing something, and then uh, he'll tell you, let me go back to the beginning and let you know about how, you know, I got into this mess, basically. So basically, we introduced our main character, Ricky Beamer, at the very beginning. And basically, he kind of sneaks in in, uh, in the school newspaper. <clears throat> I mean, it, 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 he sneaks in at school so that he can read, so, so that he can write something. Uh, for the school newspaper, he was running, <clears throat> and basically, yeah, because he got expelled, he got uh, from from the newspaper, uh, and uh, so basically, he's trying to, and it, it's all thanks to Tasha, in a way, Tasha has something to do with that, so basically, he wants to get back at her, so he, he, he types the following message, <clears throat> calling all creeps, calling all creeps, if you're a real creep, Call Tasha at 555-6709 after midnight. 6709 after midnight. So this is basically how it goes. And uh, basically what happens is that this this kid, Ricky, he, he's, he, he's a bullied. Um, he was bullied by those four um, eighth graders named Ward, Brenda, David, and Jared. And basically, he used to run this the 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 school newspapers I told you about called uh, the school newspaper called <clears throat> the Harding Herald, the Harding Herald. And basically, Ta Tasha is the one who was in charge. She was the boss, and uh, she doesn't like sixth sixth graders. She treats them like dirt. And basically, yeah, Ricky's having a pretty rough, he's having a pretty rough go at it. And uh, in case you're wondering, like you probably understood it by now. And basically, his only friend is a girl named Iris Candler. <coughs> and uh, basically, <coughs> what happens is that Ricky, poor Ricky, is uh, is getting bullied a lot. And uh, what happens is he's being bullied at the beginning, and uh, by by these four by these four eighth graders, these four bullies. So basically, they're bullying him at the beginning, and one thing leads to another, and there's an accident, and this is basically what's get what gets him suspended from uh from the school newspaper. Tasha is really furious about it. Yeah, there's going to be some broken, some broken thing. Uh, but I don't want to spoil the book too much or anything. <clears throat> so, so <clears throat> I'm not going to mention anything that might potentially ruin uh, the experience for you. <clears throat> but this is basically how it goes. And basically... So the thing happens, he pulls his little prank on Tasha to get back at her. It's kind of like a payback kind of uh, beginning, you know, a little bit like you can't scare me. Like not, not, not the whole story, though, but at least the very beginning is like getting back to her revenge. Uh, this is basically how the first few chapters play out. And basically, um, 
<clears throat> what happens is, <clears throat> I'm sorry if I keep clearing my throat a lot. It's just that, that I don't, <clears throat> I don't know why I can, I, I can't, I, I'm not able to speak properly today. Uh, but I'll try to make it up to you and uh, keep, you know, ho hopefully I, I don't want to lose you, you and, um, uh, and, on on that basis, so I'm gonna try to keep the re keep the review going. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I just wanted to mention that. So basically, Ricky, finally, yes, the next morning, Tasha is gonna is gonna ask him for to help to help her with a newspaper because there's some kind of an emergency, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, basically. <clears throat> Ricky has to take some pictures and uh, for the for some car course washing car washing thing uh and basically yeah he's taking all these pictures and uh he's gonna find out that yeah basically so, so something is gonna happen to him and uh one thing it, it one thing is gonna lead to another. And I don't wanna. I I don't wanna spoil the book too much or anything, but basically, so, yeah, he's gonna. There's gonna be a bad surprise, you know, waiting for him. And uh, there's gonna be our main character Reiki is gonna find himself in uh, in another mess. And. Uh, and basically, this was Rick Rick's final chance to basically make it up to Tasha before getting suspended for good, and he kind of blows it, <laughs> like. And this is how <clears throat> he decides to come up with the joke, the nasty prank with the phone and uh and the paper. And basically, something is gonna happen to Ricky, <laughs> and things. Things are going to kind of backfire on him. And instead of Tasha getting the calls in the middle of the night and getting, you know, basically harassed, Ricky is going to find himself on the receiving end of, uh, of those, of those fo phone calls, of those phone calls, those phone calls in the middle of the night. He's going to be the one getting them. So it kind of, it kind of, it kind of backfires on him completely, and uh, basically whoever's calling him is asking for some strange things like, "When shall we meet? When will the creeps meet?" And basically, yeah, um, Ricky is uh, he he's getting you know <clears throat> he finds himself in a bigger mess than he was before with all the creeps kind of getting back at him. Instead of Tasha getting, you know, uh, getting uh, taught a lesson for what she did, for dealing unfairly with Ricky, and that wasn't his whole... <clears throat> it wasn't wholly... <clears throat> it wasn't his, his fault, like... It wasn't completely his fault. It was just like, yeah... Tough, tough luck, I guess. He didn't mean for that to happen. Uh, he wanted to teach her a lesson, but now he's the one who ends up getting a lesson of his, being taught a lesson of his own. So basically, yeah, he's going to be, I don't want to spoil the, the book in any shape or form, but basically those purple, <clears throat> those purple lizard creatures you see with those long tongues, with those long tongues in a, uh, on the front cover, on the front cover, basically they're gonna make an appearance in the book, and uh, they're gonna find Ricky, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna basically be fa Ricky's gonna find himself face to face with these monsters, and basically he's gonna find out that they're on some kind of a mission, and. Uh, Basically, it's all it's all part of these creeps trying to trying to invade uh, the earth, and basically they're the future. They're the future, and Rick and uh, human beings are the past. Humans are history, basically, 
And uh, basically, Ricky is being asked to basically help them along with, with their mission. And they're going to give him <clears throat> some identity seeds. Some identity seeds, some identity seeds. That's, that's what they're called. And basically, he has to slip those into... Uh, he has to plant them into uh, the uh, the food so, uh, in in the in the lunch room, so that basically anybody who eats them, who eats those seeds, will uh will become a uh, will become a creep, and uh, basically that's how the reign of terror will will start, and uh, human beings will finally be annihilated, and uh, and now. They'll be replaced by creeps, basically. That's how, that's how it happens. And uh, one thing leads to another, but I'm not going to spoil the book in any shape or form. Uh, but yeah, then uh, the story plays out, and then you have the final twist. And, uh, and uh, yeah, this is basically how the, the story ends, right? And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the story. I guess that's pretty much it. I apologize if I spent a lot of time talking about it, but there was so much to say. So calling all creeps, finally, now I can get to my personal thoughts on this book <clears throat> after spending so much time talking about it. So, uh, for, like, as, le like, like, let me, like... For for title calling old creeps, I believe it's pretty good, and it and it and makes us want to know what it is about. But yeah, um, <clears throat> calling old creeps. What did I think about this book? I believe that this book is very underrated. It's pretty good. It's number fifty from Goosebumps. Calling old creeps, and I really liked pretty much everything about about the story. The characters were good. The characters were well written, even even the bullies, like they were bad and, and everything. But considering that uh they're written to be that way, they were well written. Uh I didn't like Tasha that much, I didn't like her at all, but I, at the same time I kind of understand her. She's kind of over overwhelmed <coughs> trying to run this news <coughs> trying to run this newspaper on her own. <clears throat> it's kind of difficult for her to to deal with all this, and Ricky's not making it easy for her. Ricky was a nice character, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> he's pretty relatable as she's getting bullied. But yeah, I really liked uh, I really liked the beginning with the whole build up thing and how. You know, the character is going to tell us, the character, the main character is going to tell a story in a way about how it happens, how everything starts. I like the, the fact that it starts with the, with some event that we don't know about. It's just him sneaking in uh, at his school in the middle of the night, and we don't know what led to that, but then we're going to be told about it. <coughs> like one of these... <coughs> like one of these movies where you have an event taking place, and then... It shifts to, let's say, 24 hours earlier, 24 hours ago, some, or something like this. Pretty much like, it's pretty much what we have in the story. It tells us what happened before that. And I think I think it was pretty good. I believe it was pretty good. The lizard creatures are very well written. And the whole plot to take over the earth was very scary and well efficiently <clears throat> played out. It played out very efficiently, <clears throat> and you kind of feel for the character, his whole revenge thing, you understand him, you understand that he doesn't want to, he was treated unfairly, and he wants to get back at uh, the bus, and you kind of understand this in a, in a way, in a so twisted way, it kind of makes sense. But then you feel for him. <laughs> you, you you're gonna be feeling for him as he's the one getting taught a lesson of his own, <laughs> and he's the one. And the 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 whole situation backfiring on him. <laughs> I think anybody would feel bad about him. And but it's interesting in the story, and <clears throat> it shows you that what goes around comes around. You can you can play any bad 
any tricks on people and expect to get away with this, you know, it's always going to come back to haunt you. And uh, I think it, te it teaches a good lesson to children, you know, don't try to trick people because you might as well be tricked in return. And uh, yeah, you reap what you sow, literally, as we're going to find out later on with the seeds and so on and when they're going to be planted. And the whole idea was very was very brilliantly executed. So I got to admit, Calling All Creeps was a good book. And uh, the final twist is kind of terrifying, too. I know a lot of people didn't like the final twist. I thought it, it opened up in a, you know, you had that that wide range of possibilities that could, uh, what could happen afterwards, how, how could things go wrong, how could things go wronger than they had, than, than they had, then, then they have at the end of this book. At the end of this book, I make sure I, I speak. I speak. I'm gonna make sure I, I make sense when I speak. Yeah, that they have at the end of the book. They have, you know, taken a turn for the worse in a way. But after that, there's something more to come, and uh, it, it's up to the to the reader's imagination to to try and figure it out. So that's basically it. So. Really enjoyed this book. Really a, a nice treat. I really enjoyed how the whole story plays out and everything. So, Calling Gold Creeps is definitely a good book. I would recommend to anyone, especially if you're getting into goosebumps. So, if I were to give this book a rating, I think I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. <laughs> I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. 8.5. 8.5 out of 10 for this book, 8.5 out of 10 for this book, making sure I, I'm not <laughs> leaving that out, but yeah, really good book, and uh, I really recommend it to anyone who likes these kind of, these kinds of stories with a revenge plot and everything, these kinds of stories are pretty well written and so on, so definitely recommend it, and uh, I guess that's pretty much it. What about you folks? What do you think about Calling Gold Creeps? Did you like this book? Did you hate this book? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm so excited we're getting to number 50. We're almost done with, uh, we're going to be uh, reviewing the final books and uh, the last books uh, very soon. But I uh, really like it. That I really enjoy the fact, the fact that we made it so far. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, please let me know in the comment section down below about your thoughts. I really can't wait to hear about what you have to say about this book, about number 50, Calling Gold Creeps. And uh, that's pretty much it for the review. So I'll see you next for another Goosebumps book review. In the meantime, folks, stay safe. Goodbye. Take care. This whole channel for you. Signing off. And now I'm going to be reading the summary. Reach out and scare someone. Ricky Beamer is furious when he gets kicked off the school paper. So he decides to play a joke on Tasha, the, bus the bossy editor-in-chief. The bossy editor-in-chief. Just a little joke. Harmless, really. After school one day, he sticks a message in the paper. If you're a creep, call Tasha after midnight. It reads, but somehow Ricky's, but somehow Ricky's message get, gets messed up. Ricky's message gets messed up. And, na and now he's getting calls. Strange calls from kids who say they're creeps. Creeps with scaly purple colored... Creeps with scaly purple colored scales and long sharp fangs.